Another small reading from The Secret of Light by Walter Russell. This one's concerning the speed of light and also the motion of light. Following up the last video I did, the last video I did had a lot of heavy technical information and language. Makes it hard to understand. This one is sort of similar, but hopefully a little more concise. Um, light supposed to be the fastest thing in the universe. But another way to think about motion is that if something's moving, then it must be contained within a container because it needs reference points in order to see that movement. Basically, movement or motion only exists in linear time. And so, if the universe is infinite, which I believe it is, and so does Walter Russell, then it has no boundaries. It, it has no beginning and it has no end. And this is the problem with the intellectual approach to science is they're trying to chop up reality into quantized windows that they can look into and measure what's in that window. And they think once they've measured what's in that window, they've got it all figured out. But the whole point is to realize is that there, there is no boundary. And so motion is an illusion, which makes us feel comfortable, satisfies our intellect. So if light really is the fastest thing in the world, quote unquote, um, it's actually not moving at all because it's not contained within anything. It has no reference in which to know itself or to sort of reflect off itself. And Walter Russell does a beautiful job of explaining that. So here we go. The Secret of Light, page 169. The speed in which light presumably travels is 186,400 miles per second. The distance between stars is so great that the speed of light is computed as light years. For the distance computed by lesser units of time would yield figures so great that they would be measureless and meaningless. Light only seems to travel. It is but one more of the countless illusions caused by wave motion. Waves of the ocean seem to traverse the ocean, but they only appear to do so. For waves are pistons in the universal energies and pistons operate up and down. Wave pistons of light or of the ocean operate radially and spirally, inward and outward, toward and away from gravity. Waves of light do not travel. They reproduce each other from wave field to wave field of space. That's a key point there. The planes of zero curvature which bound all wave fields act as mirrors to reflect light from one wave field into another. This sets up an appearance of light as traveling, which is pure illusion. The sunlight we feel upon our bodies is not actual light from the sun. What actually is happening is that the sun is reproducing its own condition on earth by extending the reproductions out through cold space into ever enlarging fields, ever enlarging wave fields, until those reproductions begin to converge again toward our own center of gravity into e even smaller wave fields. The heat we feel and the light we see are dependent entirely upon the ability of the wave fields to reproduce the light and heat, and that ability is conditioned upon the amount of moisture in the atmosphere. If there were no moisture in the atmosphere, our bodiless, excuse me, if there were no moisture in the atmosphere, our bodies would carbonize from the heat thus reproduced. One cannot consistently think of that heat as direct rays of the sun, for that same sunlight was intensely cold during its reproduced journey through the immensely expanded wave fields of space between the sun and the earth. The light and the heat which appears to come from the star or sun have never left the star or sun. Another key point. 
So light is not traveling. Light is not moving from the sun over time and distance to us. It only appears to do so. It's basic, He's saying that basically wave fields are, are mirrors. They act as mirrors and they transmit from wave field to wave field, which basically says that nothing is moving at all is that all light already is throughout the entire universe in every moment that it is, always. Okay, reading on. That which man sees as light and feels as heat are the reproduced counterparts of the light and heat which are its cause. The rate of vibration in a wave field depends on its volume. Vibration in wave field means the pulse of interchange between its compressed core and the space surrounding that core. A slow vibration in a large wave field would cool one's body or even freeze it, while fast pulsing interchange is extremely small wave fields could burn one's body. A lens, for example, which multiplies light and heat toward a focal point which sets paper on fire merely compresses large wave fields into smaller ones. The rate of vibration increases for the same reason that the planets nearest the sun move faster in their small orbits than those which are far away from the sun. Kepler's law covering the speeds of planets will apply to rates of vibration in wave fields as appropriately as with the movements in the solar system. All right, there you have it. Maybe replay it, listen again, and it'll start to, hopefully, start to make a good picture. And we can uh, further the dialogue. Thanks for listening.